Okay, FAQ number 74. Does the Bible prohibit drinking blood, eating and drinking blood? Uh, we're going to look at that. Um, my uh, troublemaking wife here was doing some research. <laughs> yeah, she's uh -huh. innocent. You know it. Me? And uh, she was doing some research into some different areas of the occult and everything, and she found out some things and was led to this video, which I want to be showing you a little bit of. And um, uh, very, very dangerous uh, practice that we're going to be talking about here. But the, the question came up, was there, is there anything in the Bible prohibiting the drinking of blood? Okay. And the person in this video that you're going to be seeing a clip of here in just a couple of minutes, um, they said, no, there's no clear scriptures prohibiting the drinking of blood. Turning your Bible to Acts chapter 15, verse 29. Now in context, Acts chapter 15, you have uh, Paul and I think it's Barnabas that goes, yeah, Paul and Barnabas, they go up to Jerusalem to meet with all the other apostles. And I mean, they have this official meeting, the apostles, the elders of the church. I mean, they, this is like the big shots back in that day and the real big shots too, by the way, uh, not some kind of a church council or whatever of, you know, lost religious people. And they meet together and they say, what things should we tell the Gentiles now that they're getting saved and coming in? Look what they say in verse 29. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well, fare ye well. So right there, you're to abstain from blood. Now we're going to go to Leviticus chapter 17. Back to the Old Testament. Leviticus chapter 17 see what it says back here. Leviticus chapter 17. Uh, just seeing where I should start here. We're actually going to start at verse 10. I was going to read verse 14. That's the actual command. But let's start at verse 10. It says, And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Sorry there, John MacArthur, saying that the blood had nothing to do with paying for your sins. You know, Jesus could have just been strangled and it would have meant the same thing. Uh, he's, he's quite ignorant of Scripture. Verse 12, Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the, stranger, or of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. If you want to get in touch with devils, become possessed with devils, start eating blood. Now what do you say, what do you mean eating blood? How can you eat liquid? Well, by eating raw meat that is saturated with blood. Okay, that's the prohibition there. You're supposed to cook the meat. And before you cook it, you're supposed to get the blood out of it as much as is possible. All right, it's prohibited to eat blood, to eat or drink blood. Let's go to one other place here, Genesis chapter 9. It's very significant. Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, we'll start there. It says, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green, green herb have I given you all things. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Okay? Now, you say, what's the significance there? You showed us three verses. Okay. What's the scriptural principle? In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. But even more important than that, did you notice where the verses were located? Genesis, chapter 9, before the giving of the law. Leviticus, after 
or excuse me, under the law. The book of Acts, after the law. If you want to make three main dispensations, those would be the ones. Now, I believe in seven dispensations, but the point is you have before the law, under the law, after the law. Three different places, so nobody can duck it. Nobody can say, there's nothing in the Bible that prohibits the drinking of blood. You can't say that unless you are a Satanist or completely ignorant of Scripture. Now, having said that, let's watch a little video clip here. Get a little uh, wisdom from a pastor's wife. Um, okay, one more thing. Thoughts on eating the placenta postpartum. Okay, this is um, another question that I get asked. Um, this commenter said she's convinced it's wrong because it's like cannibalism and eating blood. Well, I would agree that it's wrong if you were actually eating another person's body, but cannibalism is eating somebody else. Eating your own placenta, well, that's you. It's your own placenta. Um, I would not say it's sinful. I mean, have you ever um, bit your lip and then there's blood and you eat that? You wouldn't be like, wow, you're eating the blood. You're not doing it for the pleasure of eating the blood. It's just, you know, that sometimes that happens. Um, Okay, let me just pause it there for a minute. What a stupid line of reasoning. Or you cut your lip and some of the blood gets in your mouth and you swallow it. So that's the same thing as eating your placenta. Um, yeah, okay. You know, uh, I don't recommend looking up uh, what a placenta looks like. Okay, it's it's very disgusting. It's child it's part of the childbirthing process. I understand that. But the point is, it you, oh, it's just it's part of your own body. Uh, no, actually, it's there because of the child. The placenta is there within the womb to give nourishment and, and food and everything to the child. And it filters blood and, and it's, it's basically the main thing that gives blood to the child. So you talk about blood being in flesh. The thing controls the blood being put into the child. And you're going to eat a piece of it? And you say, well, she, she didn't do that. She's just saying, well, let's keep watching. I don't think it's wrong to use the placenta capsules. And these actually tie in with the previous question, pardon me, <clears throat> about preventing postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, the placenta is filled with those natural hormones that can be made into a lotion that you can apply topically, just like we have progesterone creams. And really, when you get the progesterone creams um, that are sold, you can either use one with artificial hormone, which is, um, has been implicated in cancer, or you can use the ones that are natural, but all that means is that the placenta was derived or the, the, the lotion was using hormones derived from the placenta of animals. That typically is a cow. So, um, you know, no, I don't really see an issue there. Um, I don't think it's cannibalism. I don't think it's like eating blood. I don't go around and evangelize people on the benefits of eating placenta. If I never had to eat placenta, that would be fine with me. I will say that with my most recent pregnancy with Boaz, um, because I was expecting twins, my placenta was larger than normal, and I tend to hemorrhage after giving birth. I did a little bit more with him, and my midwife just walked up to me, and she's like, here, pop this in your mouth, quick. And she popped something in my mouth, and I swallowed it, and it stopped the bleeding like that. And she told me later that was a piece of my placenta. So if you're grossed out now, um, I don't blame you, but you know what? I think it's preferable to having to go to the hospital and um, having them mess with you. And no, I don't think it's wrong biblically. Sin is a transgression of the law. So unless there's a specific verse that forbids that, I'm always very cautious. You know, there's things that are wrong and then there's things that I wouldn't do. So this probably falls into that category. <laughs> okay, yeah. There, you know, there are things that are wrong. There are things that are not specific. You know, there are no specific verses. I just showed you three, three. I mean, we're talking crossing dispensational lines. There aren't too many things that are before the law, under the law, after law. I mean, we're talking major scriptures here against the thing of eating, you know, blood. It's just so crystal clear, you know. And oh, but it's it stops the bleeding and all this other stuff, you know. And and let me just I want to just address one other thing here very quickly, and that is people will say they'll defend this and they'll say, well, other mammals do it. We're not mammals, okay? That's evolutionary categorization. We are not mammals. We are created in the image of God. We are a different order than the animals. So, you know, this, this warped mentality, I mean, it, it's just, it's disgusting. 
you know, just, just showing the kind of, of preaching that goes on there with the Anderson, Stephen Anderson. That's his wife, by the way, if you don't know that. That's his wife. Doesn't her husband know this simple teaching from Scripture? And, he's, and he claims to be non-dispensational. So, I mean, there's three places, you know, you can't duck it as a dispensationalist. You can't duck it as a non-dispensationalist. You're not supposed to eat blood. So this practice is satanic, and they say, oh, it will heal all kinds of properties. Oh, yeah, devils can do all kinds of stuff like that. You eat blood, you are in to devil possession. Okay? Satanism, uh, higher levels of witchcraft, you know, whatever, they're, they're committing sacrifices, they're eating blood. All right? So really just... Ooh, really bad and and you know she discovered that thing watching part of that video you know doing some research here and it was just like i mean she told me about it. I, was, I was like what so does you have anything else to add yes um you know it's funny how miss zuminati claims to say oh it's there's nothing in the bible about it well have you actually heard of something called the monthly flowers habit talked about in the bible something that every woman gets whether mm -hmm you know, teen, you know, and you're just starting out, whether you're married, you know, in any circumstance until a certain age, you're going to have a monthly flowers habit. Right. You know, unless, of course, you go to the witchcraft doctors, otherwise known as medical establishment goons that say, take this pill and we can regulate your, your monthly supply so you don't have issues and, and all the other things that yep. go along with that. And if you look it up in the Bible, it's like saying, you know, this is an unclean time and whatever else they had to do <clears throat> animal sacrifices when the woman had a child. I mean, there was, it was an, it was a thing of uncleanness. What comes out, it's unclean. And to eat part of that is it's Satanism. It really is. It really is. So, uh, does the Bible prohibit drinking blood? Oh, absolutely. Very, very clearly. And you know, if you just, I'll say this yet. When you're cooking meat, make sure that it's cooked and there's no blood coming out of it when you're pushing down on it with your fork or your knife or something like well, that. Well, wait. Very, very important. If there's any okay. left over, couldn't you just apply it on your skin because it's a good <laughs> lotion? I mean, yeah. after all, it's healthy and natural because it's part of your body. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> the Bible does prohibit drinking blood.